very much for staying on the show and welcome back. The Auditor General, the Auditor General Daniel Domenovo, has charged internal auditors across the country to be more proactive in their service delivery. He was addressing the 2018 Annual Internal Audits and Governance Conference themed Impact of Leadership on Institutional Governance. Karen Dobi reports. The two-day conference aims at creating a more sustainable future for internal audit practice that is built on the global values of transparency, effective and impactful governance, value addition, innovative advice and continuous learning. Delivering the keynote address at the opening of the conference, Auditor General Richard Domelevo highlighted some challenges facing auditors including poor condition of service but noted it should not be a hindrance to performance. Be professional in doing your work. Even when your conditions of service are not good, still be professional, still do your work. At times, it pays in the long run, not the immediate. I remember when I was working in control and accountant general, the first thing we always remembered was that our scheme of service or our conditions are not good. And I used to tell my colleagues, that you complain every time we meet, our scheme of service is not good, our scheme of service is not good. Do you think that you can write that into your CV to say because you're not well paid, that's why you didn't perform, but the institution where I am going, if you pay me, I will perform? I don't think we can write a CV that way. The conference is being organized by the Institute of Internal Auditors Ghana on the theme, Impact of Leadership on Institutional Governance. Reporting for Joy Business, Karen Dodo. Now, some good news for commercial banks that are struggling to meet the December deadline, uh, a capital requirement set by the Bank of Ghana. Sources say the regulator could start enforcing the new requirement levels by the first quarter of 2019. We have details in this report. It was initially believed that if banks failed to meet the requirements by the end of this year, they could lose their license just after December 31. However, sources close to the regulator say they will start reviewing the financials of these banks by the end of the first quarter of 2019. This is because the actual stated capital would be known or captured in the 2019 first quarter numbers. However, Joy Business is learning that in order not to be taken by surprise, the governor of the Bank of Ghana would, by middle of this year, carry out its own detailed assessment of the recapitalization plan submitted by the banks to ensure that by the end of 2018, they would have met the 400 million city capital requirement, which some banks say they have already met. A former Director General of SNIT, Ernest Thompson, and two other managers have been indicted in the Price Waterhouse Coopers investigations into the controversial SNIT software scandal. One supplier from among the contractors has also been indicted in the audit. The over 300 page report was presented to SNIT this morning at a press conference which ended. Now, Board Chairperson of the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, Dr. Kwame Adukufo, is to ensure, said the report would ensure transparency in the ongoing probe that PricewaterhouseCoopers was contracted to conduct an independent audit into the controversial $72 million digitization contract. But nevertheless, I'm very happy to see all of you. Fellow members of the board and management, ladies and gentlemen, and friends of the press, I thank all of you for coming to the pension house this morning to witness the presentation of the report on the independent review and assessment of the trust by Pricewaterhouse. For the three year period ended 31st December 2016 and for the three month period ended 31st March 2017. The current board and management of the trust were appointed by His Excellency the President, Nanadu Dankwa Kufuadu, a little over a year ago. And a month later, we had a little meeting with the press 
it was also very well attended. And at that time, we asked you to cooperate with us and see the developments in the coming year. At that time, also, we brought in Pricewaterhouse and informed the press and the nation that we are going to do a report. And that report is the independent review and assessment, which has been, is going to be presented today by Pricewaterhouse. Well, the team leader for PricewaterhouseCoopers, Michael C. Edwenpi, who presented the report to the board chair, also gave some highlights. As you did say, indeed, in August, you awarded the contract to perform the independent assessment and baseline review of the trust from the three years up to December 2016, and then the three months up to 31st of March 2017. Uh, we commenced the exercise, and uh, as part of the process, did meet various levels of management to obtain information that helps us to establish the current state of uh, the trust. We did uh, compare the current state of the trust with benchmarks that we have developed in the four areas of IT review, the human resource review, the financial management review, and then the internal controls assessment. As part of that process, we did identify certain gaps and also identified certain uh, areas where we believe there were strong systems in place. We, in our report, have uh, cataloged the gaps that were identified, uh, recommendations that we believe, if they are considered, will help the trust uh, to become a lot more competitive in its uh, uh, activities. So this morning, Mr. Chair, we are happy to present uh, that uh, report formally to you. It is a bulky report. The report is structured in five sessions uh, with uh, some appendices. Uh, together, it's about 340-plus page document. Uh, it's a, a big one. But why we went that route is to provide as uh, much information as we considered relevant so that it helps with your own review and then also helps in the next line of action that uh, the board would like to take in terms of implementing uh, systems that can improve the efficient running of the trust. Now, the Director General of SNIT, Dr. John Oforitin Kwang, also shared some thoughts on the report. Project in question was part of um, a larger automation project, which was supposed to automate the business processes of SNET. Um, that project was also part of this um, um, audit or this review that PwC has carried out. Um, the the issues that at that time we said that we have uh, have been uh, investigated and documented. Um, the costs of that project has been factored into the report. I think that uh, when I give you, when we photocopy the executive summary, uh, you will be apprised as to what the distribution is and what the numbers are. Um, so that project is subject matter of that report. Now away from that, officials of the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, today stormed the premises of some retail outlets to remove all products that have not been affixed with tax stamps. The operation is part of the enforcement process for the excise tax stamp policy, which started last month. Some of the products taken off include alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. According to the Head of Education and Public Affairs of the GRA, Bobier Ansan, the exercise aims at ensuring that only products affixed with tax stamps are found on the market. Ebenezer Sabuti was with them in our reports. The operations began from the industrial area branch of Melcom, where some products, including foreign alcoholic wines, were taken off the shelf by the operation team. Managers of the retail center attempted to challenge the officers, but later pleaded, indicating that they are in the process of affixing the stamps on all their products according to the law. The team continued to Gihog Distilleries Limited, an alcoholic beverage manufacturing company, at the industrial area, where its managing director, Maxo Kofi Juma, supported the idea and took the team to the company's packaging plant to inspect the newly installed affixing machine. He later explained in an interview with Joy Business that the move is a good one. You have to pay taxes. 
all over the world. I mean, I don't know any place in the world where you don't pay tax. There's also the concern yeah. about the, the cost of the machine because they were saying that they have to use their own money to buy the uh, uh, fixing machine. And that is why they are against it. Some of the companies are against it. I mean, <laughs> the point is somebody has to pay. They can buy it for us and increase our taxes. Oh, we buy it and pay it our own way. Somebody has to pay for it. Is it because you are a state company? Before you no, 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 no. I'm saying this because I'm a Ghanaian. <laughs> That's all. We have to pay taxes. The team then moved to shop prior to supermarket at the West Hills Mall, Maxima Shopping Center, and Baku's Wine and More in Accra. According to the head of education and public affairs, Arthur G. Ari, Bobier Ansam, the exercise aims at ensuring that only products are fixed with the tax stamps are found in the market. Today's exercise to, uh, was to ensure compliance with the law. We've gone out and we have seen that there is selective compliance. In other words, some of them, they have the products, the stamps are on them, but most of the products they don't have. We want total compliance. We went to Gihok and we see that there's total, that is Gihok, uh, this, this series, they are doing well. In the, we believe that other organized, other manufacturers can do the, the same thing. So it defeats the, the, the argument that oh, there are no machines because somebody has been able to procure the machine and they are applying the law. The team promises to return to the various outlets and announce. Now in other stories, energy giant Siemens has committed to investing over $200 million in Ghana's renewable energy sector. The company is exploiting other ventures of creating efficient energy sourcing through the conversion of waste to power. Regional sales manager for West and Central Africa Siemens, Anor Kemeni, has been speaking to Joy Business on how this project will contribute massively to the national grid. Charles IT has more in this report. Converting waste to energy is becoming a paramount focus for countries around the world. With growing population and increased demand for energy, the renewable energy technology cannot be overemphasized. Growing levels of waste generated in the country on a daily basis means that there is the need for innovative ways to generate clean energy from these waste materials rather than just dumping them at landfill sites. This is currently the focus of Cement's, a giant energy solutions company operating in the country. Anod Kameni is the regional sales manager for West and Central Africa at Cement. There is a change in terms of mindsets uh, regarding um, the quality of, uh, of, of, the, of the environment, um, the, the, um, the environment is becoming more and more important for, for African citizens and people are more concerned and more aware about the quality of the environment they live in. And uh, this is the reason why we have our technology that are here to, to, uh, to help this, uh, this industry picking up. The waste to energy technology by converting significant amounts of trash into power could create a new industry and some much needed jobs for many unemployed, especially the youth. Cement is currently collaborating with government to roll out the new technology. The discussion with goods, there is a potential in terms of waste um, available in a city like uh, like Accra, but I think what's really is what is really important is to have also the the government uh, governmental authorities supporting those initiatives. Um, yeah, somehow by providing uh, incentive. It is estimated that only one kilogram of waste has a calorific value of around 10,000 kilojoules and can ideally replace about 0.25 liters of high-grade fuel oil. Waste to energy is therefore more important than waste management option, but a viable energy solution. And some players in the marketing and advertising space are lamenting an increase in interest rates and low national productivity are having rippling effects on the success of their businesses. According to Chief Commercial Officer of BTL Africa, Eloine Amandi, the phenomenon is a disincentive for businesses and affects their capacity to effectively advertise their products. He spoke with Joy Business on the sidelines of the fifth anniversary celebration of BTL Africa, the marketing solutions provider here in Accra. Esmat Awusa has more. 
The BTL Africa 5th anniversary celebration brought together staff and clients from various organizations. Speaking to Joy Business, Chief Marketing Officer of BTL Africa, Eloin Amande said, advertising and marketing have been confronted with some challenging times due to unfavorable macroeconomic environment. As a business, I think that the biggest thing that we have had to face is the, I'll start from the top, which will be the macroeconomic environment. I mean, look, we are not um, an island. We're a function of the economy that we are in. And typically in the marketing industry, marketing and advertising industry, what happens is that when the macroeconomic environment is not great, brands will squeeze their budgets. You know, advertising budget is the first one that sort of gets a cut. And once that gets a cut, it affects agencies. At head of client services at BTL Africa, Daryl Owusu Entry urged advertising and marketing agencies to embrace technology in order to thrive. BTL. We are moving to the future. And you know that the future is techy and artificial intelligence. We want to portray that because all our clients are moving towards that. You can tell a lot of people are downsizing using technology to work. A lot of companies will downsize from here. They will move an entire department to another country. They can work via technology. We also need to keep up with the trends. If we don't stay ahead, we will also lose business. You know there are a lot of marketing agencies in the market. But the key point is, like I said, innovation and always being with the clients. You need to be a, your client's friend. We are not just here for business at the end of the day. We are here to provide you a service, a service to grow your brand, to make your brand impactful. And at the end of the day, make money for you. So it's not just about all of that. And I'll be your friend too. You can call me at 2 a.m. You want to talk about something, bounce something off me. I'm ready to listen to you. At the end of the day, that's what we do here. BTL Africa, also known as Below the Line Marketing Solutions, is an affiliate of Dentsu Ages Network. Bismarck Ausa, Joy Business. The IMF board is now set to meet, uh, to meet on Ghana at the end of the month for a review of government's performance under the program. Sources say this follows some progress made in meeting crucial program conditions before this meeting. But what are the implications for the program expected to be completed by April 2019? And could this mean a possible increase in taxes? There's more in this report. This meeting is coming on finally after several postponements from March this year to April 9. And our joy business sources say it has been firmed up on April 30. Analysts had initially argued that if the meeting didn't come on this month, it could have serious implications on the program being completed by April 2019. Senior Minister Yosef Mafu had told Joy Business most of the prior actions are under government's control, insisting that the program will be completed as scheduled. Some of the triggers are, most of them are within the control of Bank of Ghana and the Minister of Finance. And they will make sure that we meet those triggers. At the moment, so far from what I have read and discussed, we don't have any problem meeting the target. It is however not clear for now whether government has agreed to implement those fresh fiscal measures that could result in tax increases later this year to deal with revenue challenges facing the economy, or they will issue more euro bonds to plug those loopholes in the budget. But having been able to secure a date for the board meeting, then it is clear that a staff report might be ready for Ghana to pass the board meeting. This would lead to fresh dinner disbursements, including the IMF cash, that would also come in, and even some good credit ratings, as well as fresh capital from investors. It's a Wednesday and it's our time for the Joy Business Van. Now the health and wellness sector is providing opportunities for many entrepreneurs, whether in the food market, IT, healthcare delivery or fitness. Today on the Joy Business Van, we will engage some startups in the space ahead of the Joy Business Health and Wellness Trade Show, organized by Joy Business. <laughs> Good health is very important. Productivity depends on good health, and that's why many organizations and individuals invest in health and wellness. There are also entrepreneurs who are taking advantage of the business opportunities in the space. The opportunities range from healthcare delivery, healthy food market, fitness, IT and the list goes on.
Ghanaians have become increasingly concerned about their fitness and a lot more people are now trooping to the gyms. Ellie is an instructor at Total Fitness Health Club in Accra. He tells us more about the caliber of people that patronize the club. Three kinds, three kinds. Emotionally broken people, exceptionally motivated people, and actually no motivation people. Some people actually come to the gym just for the fun of it, not necessarily because of anything. You understand? Some people come because they want to look good, they're motivated by how they look good. And you say, hey man, you look good. Some people actually are motivated by the fact that, hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you, you coming to see somebody there. You get what I'm trying to say? Some people actually want to come and release tension, work, work stress, home stress. You know, so many stresses hitting people, killing people. Stress is actually killing a lot of people. Well, one other thing killing people is unhealthy diets. In recent times, Ghanaians are turning to organic food. Native food and beverage bar was started barely a year ago. It would be AECH chairperson and brands and marketing director. find out that um, most of the time, especially with corporates, um, our eating habits are not helping us very much because we are more into the fast foods and native is an, an, a preferred alternative that has come in to more or less rescue all of us, okay? Um, we need to be eating well, stay healthier so that we can be able to work better. And especially if you work in a corporate organization, making time to see a doctor could be difficult. So Cedric Fuji and his friends created the Doctor app, which allows you access healthcare from the comfort of your home. All right, so here's the interface of the app. So you see it's a very simple and beautiful design. To request an appointment is very easy. So you just click on the blue uh, button right here. And then this legal disclaimer just says, you know, if you're dying, go straight to the hospital. But for our purposes here, you would just click no. And then here you simply select your date, okay? And then your primary concern, let's say diarrhea. And then you click on find to find what doctor that you want to have your appointment with. But living healthy is considered expensive. Does this kind of lifestyle work for everyone? It actually depends on the, what do you call it, the standard of the gym, the class of the gym, or if you go to places like not to look down on us. Some gyms, some gyms tend to actually pay us, blow us 50 Ghana cities for registration and 100 Ghana cities for what do you call it, uh, monthly dues. Some gyms go as high as 500 Ghana cities for monthly uh, packages because probably they have more to offer than the other gyms, you understand? So actually in terms of a gym that actually would suit your, what do you call it, your needs, a gym you actually feel comfortable around. It's all about making their customers comfortable, isn't it? Well, back at Native, Edubia shares the challenge she faces operating an organic food joint. Um, well, some of the challenges may come with suppliers, okay, because like I'm saying, we, we, we're looking at organic people who grow um, organic um, fruits and vegetables. And uh, you have to have a very keen eye to detect because some may not be that organic. And since we are looking at healthy, you know, we, we, we are looking at suppliers who are that, um, you know, giving us something organic. There is no doubt an opportunity for investors, but also not fully tapped is the technological trends in healthcare. The operators of the Doctor app are confident about the prospects for the industry. At least for this market and for the kind of app that we have, because, you know, nothing wrong about the Ghanaian market, but I think that Ghanaians in general, are, you know, they can be a little bit pessimistic, especially when you're new to the market and all that, and a little bit relaxed. And so we have to be really good at executing on marketing and branding and pushing our brand out there so we have people coming, more people coming and patronizing our product so we can invest in the next features and continue uh, to grow. But those things together, I think, will help us sustain this business. And I have no doubt at all in my mind uh, that that's going to happen because it's very clear. You know, everybody needs uh, health care. The investors are listening to us, you know, and so we'll get there. And, and, and I'm very excited about, uh, about the future in, in those things. Get another edition of the Joy Businessman on Wednesday on Business Life.
and get a repeat on Thursday on the marketplace. It's our time for the interview of the day. The country has been ranked fourth best place of doing business in Africa. This was captured in the latest Rand Merchant Bank Investments Rankings. It was revealed at the first National Bank Economic and Business Breakfast Forum in Accra. Celeste Falconia is Marco strategist for Rand Merchant Bank. Most of these reports that we see where Ghana's ranking across the world, they've got probably pillars of about 50 altogether. Obviously, you've got taxes, you've got investment into infrastructure, you've got the ease of doing business, how you get in and out. I think what we can do with Ghana is make the private sector more involved in what the changes could be, um, whether it is registering for businesses, whether it is um, how to get an influx of foreign direct investment and how you can make it easier for exporters to bring their goods into the market. Um, and again, as I mentioned with Mauritius, for instance, being the best business environment, tax incentives are so important. Um, for investment to come in. So I think there's a lot of areas where they can work on. Unfortunately, the, the levels of corruption is still very high in, in Africa as a whole, and unfortunately, Ghana is not um, free from that. So I think if we can bring, if the government can bring those corruption levels down, it will also bring significant investment from the foreign investors. And it's a wrap on Business Live this evening. Thank you very much for watching. Join me again same time tomorrow for another edition. My name is Imano Abwaji. Yeah, we have a good day.